Hi, welcome to today's series where we're going to be using the small Pilates ball. So all you want to do is make sure that there's a bit of air in it, not 100% fully blown, and we will be changing it potentially. So we're going to begin lying down onto your back. I'm going to start with the ball just between the knees and then resting your spine on the floor. We're going to go into a series of bridges. So make sure that your feet are comfortably close enough towards your sit bones so that your hamstrings don't overly work. When you're ready to, you're going to be lifting the pelvis away from the floor, coming up into your first bridge, and then coming back down again. So as you do your bridging, remember there's different ways to bridge. You can do a rolling bridge, keeping all the vertebrae sort of moving like links in a chain and coming down with that same motion. Or you could be doing more of a flat style bridge, which means you're just going to feel like you hover your hips into the air and then lower them back down again. The image I have for this one is Tower Bridge in London, how it just sort of opens up the two flaps and then comes back down to make a bridge again. So whatever version you're doing, get to the top of this next one and pause. And we're going to squeeze onto the ball just for five repetitions. So as you're squeezing, you really want to feel like the inner thighs are beginning to do a little bit of work. And then when you've finished your five squeezes, then you're going to lower your body back down to the floor. We're going to repeat, repeat that one more time. So peeling or lifting the pelvis up into the air. Stay steady across the shoulders and the back of the head. And then again, squeezing the ball. Not so much that you want to pop it, but that you do want to feel those inner legs doing a bit of activity for you. And then bringing yourself down. From here, we're going to lower the ball down and we're going to place it underneath your right foot. So as we put it here, what you're looking for is the most level position of your foot. Most of us will want to pull the heel down to try and find some stability there, but your challenge is to try and keep it as level as possible and as light as possible. So we're going to go again into the hover. So when you're coming up, if you overly squeeze onto that right leg, that ball is going to want to do all sorts of weird things. So making sure that it's a nice, gentle touching point as you come up and down. So we've got five in a row. So lifting yourself up. I always like to just remind you that even though your legs are at different height, your pelvis is still going to be staying level. So as you're coming up, there's not now a tendency to roll the hips off to the side, but instead feeling like you had little hooks at your hip bones and they were being pulled up to the ceiling by imaginary cords. And again, coming back down. So of course, we're going to increase what we're about to do. So this is our number five. I'm going to hold here. From here, you're just going to transfer your weight onto that right foot and pick up your left knee and then lower your foot back down. Now, this is definitely going to work the back of the leg. So be mindful as you float the knee and lower the knee. And we'll do that one more time, lifting and lowering and then returning yourself back towards the mat. It's not an easy one, that one, so just be mindful with how you are in your body. Change the ball over to the left foot side, and again, just feeling where's my too far forward, too far backward, and then find your midpoint, and then up we come, nice and gentle. So in this position, you should almost feel like you've got no weight onto the ball foot, so you're doing literally a single leg bridge. And because you kind of know where you're going with this movement, just sense if you're ready to be taking it to the next level. We've got two more like this as we just raise the pelvis coming into that diagonal line and slope of your bridge. And then on this next one is when we're going to hang out. So again, do what you have to do to stabilize onto the ball and then floating your knee up and then lowering your foot down. And again, raising the leg up and lowering the leg down. Your challenge is to maintain the different distance between you and the floor as that leg is floating up. That's all. And then bringing it all the way back down. Wasn't so bad, was it? All right, so from here, we're gonna bring that ball and place it underneath the sacrum. So behind the back of the pelvis. So in this motion, we're just gonna start with a little bit of a rolling of the pelvis. So curling the pelvis back towards you and then circling it around. So just getting a little bit of freedom into the lower spine and around the pelvis area. So we've got lots of muscles around this area of our body that are deep and um, what we call endurance muscles. And they like to be stimulated in this way. 
and then you're going to roll the uh, ball around in the opposite way. So when we're walking through life, you know, there are a lot of muscles that are working without us even realizing. So taking some time just to do these kind of moves with a little bit more mindfulness is going to be quite good for your soul. And then bringing yourself back to center, reposition the ball if you feel like it got out of alignment and are minded. And then from here, you're going to bring your knees up into the air. So we're just going to let the feet um, sort of hang down towards the base of your sit bones. And then can you move your legs around into a circle? So perhaps as you do this, you might want to choose to widen your arms a little bit away from you so that you've got a bigger base of support so that you can have more range of movement with your legs circling around. So whenever we do these kind of movements, we want to work on the subtlety of the movement, not trying to make a big gross movement around, but really feeling where can I stay even through the back of my body and through the front of my body. Let's change the direction. And again, just noticing how you like to go in this variation. Where are your sticking points? Where do you feel excess tension coming into your body? Where do you feel really stable? So I always like to remind people breathing is really important through this one as well. This is, again, another challenging movement to do on top of the ball. So from here, we're just going to extend one leg all the way out and away from you, going into a big stretch. From here, we're going to lower the leg toward the floor and then bring the leg all the way up towards the ceiling. And again, lowering the leg down and lifting it back up. So a folding action in the front of the hip. If your leg length is not suitable to stay straight all the way up, then you know you can do a little micro bend in the knee to get the extra range. But we don't want to be bringing the leg so close to you that you end up rolling everything backward into the floor. So we still are just focusing on that leg on its own, going up and down. As you lower the leg this time, leave it out at the halfway point and bring it all the way back in again. Stretching out with the other leg, lengthen out long, find the length through the front of the hip, and then lowering the leg toward the floor, and then bringing it back up. So if you've ever done reformer classes before into a reformer machine itself, and you've done your feet into the straps, it's very similar to that, but there's no support right now. You're working everything on your own as we raise the leg and as we lower the leg. And we've got one more to do on this leg and then lowering it down to that halfway point and then bringing the leg back in. We're gonna switch again to the other side as you reach away. And now we're just gonna stay in the single leg stretch motion as you slide one leg out and then pulling the other leg in. So again, we're gonna try and do this with as little shift as possible through the ball line. And to make it a little more challenging, you're going to bring your arms up towards the ceiling. If you can hold everything steady there and still move the legs, you're doing well. If you can now add in a little bit more coordination, you're going to change opposite arm reaching out to the side as the leg comes in, I mean as the leg goes out, sorry, and then switching over. So keeping one leg and one arm steady, and then the opposite sides are moving. Now normally we would move that arm over the top of your head, but today we're adding in a different challenge, of course, by moving it out to the side. You know, I always like to keep things a little bit fresh and coming all the way back from here, lower the arms over the top of the head and then bringing the arms back up towards the ceiling. And again, sending the arms backward, lengthening into the sides of the waist. This is more challenging than you actually think to try and stay steady on that ball. Three more times as we reach back, make sure that your head hasn't tilted to the ceiling and that you've got a nice connection of the back of the head down to the mat surface. All right, as we come up for our last one, you've got a few options. The first option is to lower your feet as your arms are traveling back behind you. Your second option is to stretch the legs on the diagonal as the arms travel back. So either version is going to work for you. That's the one you're about to do, another three of. So as we're stretching everything away, you're coordinating both the arm movement and the leg movement, and then bringing it all the way back in and rest your feet to the floor. Up you go with the hips, out comes the ball, and we just have a little moment here. Really feeling nice and deep and dense onto the back of the pelvis. From this position, we're just gonna roll you over onto a side, placing the ball in between the two knees. 
So we're going to stack it up onto your forearm position. So remembering you want to have the elbow a little bit closed in towards your waist. Try not to sink down towards the floor, but actually to lift your body sideways up. So keeping a good position between elbow to hip and hip to underarm. So a nice triangle shape. From here, gentle squeeze on the ball as you raise your hips away from the mat. So it's tempting to want to look down, but that's going to pull your head forward. So you're going to keep your eye gaze looking out in front of you as you raise and as you lower. That might be enough. Some people may even want to use their hand supporting on the floor. If you feel like going that little bit deeper, we're going to send the arm all the way over the top of your head and then create even more of your side bend action and then lowering yourself all the way back down again. So again, we pick up the hips, we send the arm over, we keep reaching and opening the ribs and then returning. We'll do one more like that as we bring our pelvis off the mat and then stretching yourself all the way over and returning down. This next one is a little bit more challenging, so make sure that you feel strong in that upper body shape. We're going to go back into the more parallel or lengthened position of your triangle shape. Up goes the arm to the sky and we're going to add a twist. So you're going to rotate yourself through looking toward the back and then bringing yourself forward. Stay with the eyes looking front when you come up. And then again, lead the eyes down and follow your hand underneath the body and then returning to the top. We'll just do another three as you wrap through the ribs. So we call this one threading the needle. And just making sure that you've still got that firm structure through the side of your body. And if my counting is right, we have one more to go as we slide through. Gentle, never forcing those moves. They're very intense. And then bringing yourself all the way back. From here, you're going to take the ball behind the back of the top knee. And you're going to lower yourself down all the way onto the mat surface. We're going to be raising the leg up and you're going to tap your knee to the front and tap your toes to the back. So as we do that motion, it's an internal and an external movement of your thigh inside of the hip joint. There's a feeling of widening the sacrum behind you as the knee comes to the front and a narrowing of the sacrum as you take it to the back. So very good for your sacroiliac joint function for this movement. And then we'll just do one more time like that. And then from there, we're going to take our leg into a full circle. So bringing it up and circling it around and down and forward again. So the movement is a nice big stirring action inside of the, the hip joint. So again, if you visualized, if you've been on that reformer with your feet in straps doing nice big circles, this is it, just with a shorter lever. And then as you come down from this one, we're going to reverse your motion. So taking it around and forward so again, my hand is just on the mat surface now, but you could always bring it to the side of your hip. Um, and to make it even more challenging, if you really wanted to go there, you could send your arm straight up towards the ceiling. So every variation of the arm is going to challenge how your leg performs and how your balance is. We're resting everything down from there, and then we're going to bring ourselves up and just swing around to do the opposite side. So again, setting yourself up. Ball between the knee line and then bringing yourself onto forearm and elbow. Set your feet up more nice and balanced with the back of your legs, I mean back of your pelvis. And then from here, we're going to bring the pelvis up into the air. So as we do this, we're just going to sort of get this as our baseline. If you're comfortable, if you need to shift, now's a good time. And then if you'd like to, we're going to add on to create that extra big side stretch so puffing the um, rib cage up towards the ceiling and then coming back down remember the steady structure of the underneath shoulder not collapsing down onto um, your ear and shoulder line but really keeping the distance nice and balanced we've got another three like this as we make our way up and you know you can never do the same movement twice so start to notice in your own body what things are you changing i feel like my feet are changing with every single movement that i'm making so maybe you've got a little telltale sign on your side too we'll do one more time just like that as we reach up and over a nice big beautiful booming arc and then coming back on our next one we're going to come up but we're going to stay in that more sort of plank and diagonal line from here, we're going to then add in our rotation. So sliding the arm through and towards the back and then bringing that arm back up to the sky. 
So the reason we go to stay in the plank is because we want the best alignment of your spine. We want it to be as straight as possible. And then we're going to add the rotation. That way we'll get the maximum amount of rotation without being caught up in other ranges of movement. The last one I think is coming up now as we thread the arm through and then bringing it all the way back and lowering down. Let's change so that the ball is held by the back of the knee. Lie yourself all the way down, supported by the head, and then sending your knee towards the front so your foot goes to the ceiling and then your foot goes to the floor as the knee goes to the ceiling. So switching between the internal and the external movement. Now it's pretty easy to want to do that from the hips swinging backward and forward. So sometimes having that hand on the hip is just going to give you a little bit of guidance to not overly do it from the hip line, but to really focus on that movement happening in the hip. Now even in my body, I can feel a big stretch coming across the front here as I tap my knee to the floor. And we know all having the best internal range. We've all got quite good external range of movement. From here, we're going to make it into that leg circle. So big, wide opening and really feel the circling action. That's important. You don't want to just, you know, do a little rectangle. You want to make it a nice big circular action. You've got two more as we go around, holding the back of that um, ball to your knee, adds a little bit of hamstring love. And then you're going to switch your direction around. So sweeping it forward and to the front. Oh, there's so much magic that you can play with with this tiny little ball. And uh, of course, lost count. So two more to go. And then last one all the way around and bringing it back. So releasing the ball from there, we're going to make our way to come towards the front. So as you do, you're going to put the ball just towards the lower part of your chest bone and mostly into that small abdominal um, part of your body. My microphone is going to go a little bit loud as I come down now. Forearms are going to be on the mat and your head is going to just drop toward the floor line. From here, we're going to begin to raise the front of the chest up, keeping the hands and the elbows on the forearms onto the ground and then returning your body over the front. And as I do this movement, I always like to tell people if it really makes you feel unwell to have the ball underneath you here, then just take it away. All it is is just providing extra range of movement and more information back to the system to try and give you a better awareness of your body. But if your body is resisting it, just respect it and take the ball away. All right, so we'll go for one more time as we bring our body height up. We're going to maintain the body height here as we create a little bit of endurance for our upper back muscles. Float the two arms away from the floor and then lower them back down. So these are like your wings as you raise the arms up and down. And just play with this as an image of thinking of the hands and the forearms lifting from the floor. Notice the weight of the arms as you do that versus trying to feel like your shoulder blades narrowing towards your spine and widening from your spine. And you should notice that there's a difference in terms of the heaviness of your arms. The closer you come to the shoulder blade line, the easier it will be. We're going to maintain our lift on the next one, pausing here and then reaching your arms in front of you and then lowering those elbows back down behind you. So maintaining the height of the body, keeping the arms up away from the floor as you slide your fingers to the front and to the back. So you can take those elbows a little further back behind you, really focusing on your lower trapezius fibers. And if you don't know where they are, don't worry, it's in the center of your back coming down like a triangle point. As you're reaching those arms, you'll be feeling that point on your lower mid back. And we'll do one more time, sliding the arms all the way out to the front and then coming back to that halfway shape, lowering the forearms and then resting the head back down toward the floor. From here, you're just going to press yourself up away from the mat surface. And just to finish off, we'll place the ball between the knees. So making sure that you have a good position through your hands and your shoulders, your toes will be in a small tuck. 
And then from here, we're going to raise your hips to the ceiling and stretch yourself all the way out. So this stretch is really about finding length in your spine and not necessarily length in your back of legs. Of course, that's always a benefit if you can get there. But if you're struggling, then just bend the knees so that you're focusing on the arm length and the spine length. And then we're going to go into as straight a leg as possible, rising up onto the toes and then aiming the heels down towards the floor. And again, pushing up onto the balls of the feet and lowering them down. And we'll do that one last time, lifting high and then lengthening long and then resting yourself all the way back down. Well, that's all we have for today. I hope you enjoyed your time with the ball and um, I look forward to seeing you again in another series.